Today I'm going to uh, actually go and do a snow run uh, using Delinda's. Delinda is a product of Ghost Barefoot. Uh, these are chain mesh, chain mail um, overshoes really, kind of a cross between a sock and a shoe. Uh, but it's really the most minimalist kind of barefoot shoe you can imagine. Because just because of the way that the material is textured and, and structured, uh, you get an extremely good grip, it's particularly on very muddy or slippery surfaces, and um, they're quite good on ice and they're quite good on, on the snow. So I'm going to do a run in these today. But first of all, let's talk about something very important. Uh, using any equipment or going any time in the snow is, or in any extreme conditions, uh, it's very important to take care of safety first. I'm out in uh, a fairly populated area, but soon you know things can get quite uh, extreme if you go off the roads or if you get lost, um, particularly in snow where your temperature will, will drop rapidly if you don't take care of yourself. So I have a few essential items that I always take with me if I'm doing a longer run uh, or any run really in the snow or in the ice. So the first uh, important thing is I take a compass with me. This just to make sure that I know which direction that I'm, I'm heading or and if I can still see a significant landmark and I, I can find out what direction I'm going. Um, or if I just need to follow a, a single direction to know that I'm not going around in circles, then um, this is, this is a, an essential tool for that. If I was going really out into the, you know, into the wilderness, I would take a map and I certainly recommend that uh, if, if you would do that as well. Another thing, you know, it might sound a bit extreme, uh, but it really can save your life. This is a survival bag. Um, if I would fall, injure myself, be unable to run, be un unable to move, I would be able to maintain my body heat uh, by wrapping myself in this bag. But also, uh, it's extremely visible. I like to carry things that are highly visible from the air, uh, which is really often the only way that you can get rescued in, in the mountains. Uh, so this is extremely useful to have. I also carry a powerful torch. Again, it's very visible. This is actually a diving torch, but it uh, it works it works fine for um, works fine for any conditions as well. Another important thing is uh, first aid kit. Uh, just contains a few essential things: antiseptic wipes, bandages, uh, band aids, some basic medications, and um, just to make sure that you know you have have some uh, basic supplies in, in the case that you would get injured. Useful to have. Another thing, especially if you uh, if you do get lost or if you need to be able to signal at night, I carry a light stick, and uh, you simply open these up and break them, and they and they will glow. It gives you some light, but it also it can help to signal any rescuer if you get into trouble. Another useful piece that I always carry is a dry pack. This is useful for carrying things like uh, your ID and your money and this kind of thing. Uh, if you want to make sure that you've got those things kept dry. It's also useful if you're in a situation where you're going to really be out in the wilderness. You can keep uh, fire starting materials such as cotton, uh, dry tinder and that kind of thing. And that will make sure, the dry pack will make sure that uh, even if you get immersed in water or if you get very wet, that those things are going to stay dry. I also carry a multi-tool, knife, saw, screwdriver, pliers, just very useful in a survival situation. Uh, I carry an extra battery, my cell phone is always traveling with me uh, but sometimes you need extra power so make sure that's charged and you can you can maintain the charge of course then you need a charging cable which is also useful I like to carry gum uh, just in case you get dry you don't use your water quite so quickly and of course mentioning water that's the most essential thing to carry with you uh, I usually just take a large bottle like this or you can use what's called a camel pack and this has a backpack compartment uh, and inside of it you can you have a large water con <coughs> water container and this you can fill this with water and then it's just available on your back um, and the advantage is that your body heat keeps the water warm so that you, you you're not drinking freezing cold water which is very good and of course the backpack can then be used to store the rest of the things because I'm running in the snow uh, today, I'm going to also wear neoprene socks. Uh, 
this is really just because you know you, your feet get cold very very quickly particularly in this you can see this is just metal and uh, although you you know although your feet do sort of trap an, a, a layer of air between this and your feet it's really not enough if you're running on snow or ice uh, it will pick up the ambient temperature the metal will cool down and your feet will get cold not to say that they'll also get wet because this doesn't provide any waterproofing nothing like that so I actually wear my regular socks just a cotton sock uh, or you know you can wear a regular sports sock of whatever material then I put the neoprene um, booties over these are just um, normal ones you can get for snorkeling or whatever and then on the top of that I'm going to put my uh, I'm going to put my Delindas uh, it's also really a good idea to take spare socks with you uh, to take your spare running shoes as well make sure that you, you have you know I have my regular running shoes which I'm going to put in my backpack it's actually a good idea when you're when you're starting out with a product like this get warmed up first in your regular shoes when you go for a run get nice and warmed up then change into the into the Delindas I'm, I'm uh, fairly experienced with these I've run with these a lot so I know kind of what my body expects and I know how it should feel um, but if I do get in any any kind of problem if I start to get too cold I'm just going to switch to my regular shoes there's no prizes for being macho uh, there's no need to be crazy with this stuff one of the other things I always like to carry with me is I carry this very powerful LED light it's uh, very nice for making video it's, uh, which is really what it's for it's also good for diving you can put it in a waterproof enclosure and dive with it uh, but it's also extremely useful um, if you again if you need to signal if you lose the light and uh, you want a very powerful bright light that can be seen from from a long distance um, this is a perfect signaling light that you can that you can use to, to help you so that's what I take and uh, I will be out in the snow showing you how to use the Lindas you can see if you look down at my foot the snow is really really deep here so I'm not going to be running in here but um, I just want to show you the, you know, this is the, the kind of terrain we have in beautiful California. But it is snowing, and uh, this is another important safety aspect when you go running in the snow. It's cold. Uh, that sounds very obvious, but you know, too many people get in trouble because they forget these things, and uh, then they get, then they get themselves in a problem. So I actually have multiple layers of clothing. So I have a kind of uh, close-fitting, long-sleeved underskin. Then I have a kind of cotton shirt which just helps with the warmth. Then I have a fleece kind of running top which is again long sleeved. And then I have a, a lined sports shell on the top. And uh, down below I have uh, socks. And I have the neoprene. Woohoo! I have the neoprene uh, booties. And I have the Delindas of course. <laughs> and uh, running tights and shorts. And with this, I'll keep, I'll keep quite happily warm. It's around about uh, maybe 33, 34 degrees, so maybe one or two degrees Celsius, something like that. It's quite windy. You could probably hear the wind on the camera. And I'm going to be running along. There's a kind of trail now that stretches back across here. And I'll just be running on the side of it because it's a nice kind of natural surface. Uh, there's a bit of snow, not too deep like that there. It's important to note if you're not used to barefoot running, you should really take your time to get your feet used to it, get used to the sensation. Because it really puts a different set of stresses on your feet. And you also have to pretty much train your feet to react to the surface underneath you. Because your feet, if you're used to shoes, don't notice all the little bumps all the stones, the little rocks what they do notice is you know the sensation of bouncing on rubber soles but here there are no rubber soles there's nothing between you and the surface and that means at first you'll find it odd you'll find it quite hard to run on a stony surface like this <laughs> and the reason is because your body hasn't learned to properly distribute its weight yet once you've been barefoot running for a little while your body kind of gets used to how 
the surface is underneath you. All those sensitive nerves on the end of your feet come into play and your body pretty much learns to redistribute your weight when it feels something uncomfortable. So if I step on a stone, almost without thinking about it, my, my body just adjusts and I'm really used to it now. And even if I step quite hard on it, I find that it really doesn't cause me any problems. But you'll need to take time to get to that point. And don't just come out and start thinking you can run you know, half a marathon or even 5k in these type of shoes without ever trying it before. You'll really get in trouble. But you can build up very quickly. Two or three months you'll be doing your normal distance runs. If you just stick to it, it's a bit of dedication. Nothing good is easy. In my regular shoes, this would be really slippy. You now this is just loose packed ice, mud, and yet I can stand in this, pull my foot out, nothing, just like mud. And no slipperiness, it's nearly impossible to slide. You can lose your balance, for sure, <laughs> but that's a different problem. But now I've been through that water, I've been through the ice, I've been standing there, and it's all flung out, and uh, you know, I can feel the temperature change, of course, on my feet, but after a few strides, Back to the normal temperature. Let's keep moving and keep warm. You know, don't go standing on ice for ages thinking it's going to be fine. They do pick up the ambient temperature. I hope another informative video about Paleo Barefoot. Do you check it out at uh, ghost-barefoot.com? Search for uh, Paleo Barefoot, should come up on Google. We have a tester program. You can get involved in testing, uh, testing new forms of these crazy barefoots. 
and uh, you'll have as much fun as I do, I'm sure. Ciao.